Amen. Good morning again. How we doing? Good, good, pretty good. Could be better. Not always, but sometimes. We can be honest, live in your dream, Gary. Yeah. Good to see you guys. You guys are so so uh, such a treat. Such a treat to see you. You're here visiting us, welcome blessings on you. Thanks for bringing the the brothers, Jeremy. And mom. Hey, good things, good things. You know, I, I watched him on the vid, on your on the phone, so you thought you were you thought you were not being watched? What do you do? Getting stuck in the slush is not fun. But when you're young and strong like these guys, it's no big deal, right? No big deal. Where did Nathan go? Oh, he's somewhere. I don't know where he is. So, I'm taking us to the Old Testament, way back in the book of Exodus, at the end of the... Uh, the very end of the book of Exodus. Genesis, Exodus. It's simple. Second Bible in. Second, second book in. And uh, you'll find there a beautiful portion of Scripture. Um, let me just say a few comments before I read about where we're at and where the nation of Israel is at. By now they have been wandering in the desert. They went through the Red Sea. They've been delivered by the enemy, the Egyptian slavery. They've been brought out of that lifestyle of slavery. And they had a few bumps in the road. They had some scares. They had some fears, just like you do, just like we do. Bumps in the road. Obstacles, hurdles, mountains, setbacks, on and on it goes. The list, breakdown, rain, stuck in the slush. I'm going to keep, I'm gonna keep bringing that up. It's, it's, like, it's really funny. But it, it's funny because I've been there. Have you been stuck in the slush with the snowmobile? And just the brutal, heavy. And then you're thinking, well, if I don't get this out, it's going to freeze in. Right? 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 Nathan, there you are. Good to see you. So glad. You got your coffee ready to go. And the children of Israel weren't always happy. What's the deal? But what? Look what God has done for you. We take our eyes off the Lord, what happens? We get stuck. Well, no, I'm not saying I mean, we get stuck in our attitude. We get stuck in life. Burden. What God told Moses now that you're, you're making your way through the wilderness, because of your unbelief and lack of faith, your degeneration, this is, you're going to wander for 40 years. Well, that's encouraging. Not good. But God stayed with the people. God remained faithful. God led them. God fed them. God protected them. God overlooked them. God filled them. Even when they complained. And back all the way to the end of Exodus, by now that the materials are in place for the tabernacle. What do you mean the tabernacle? It was the, the parts of a building, a temporary building, like a tent with fabric, and there's some boards. You read the book of Exodus, you talk about detail. God is into detail weaving different colors into the fabric of the curtain. Then there were mortise and joints. And then there was gold overlaying. And the Ark of the Covenant 
representing the presence of God. When they got this all together, Moses begins to carry out and carry on the sacrifice. Now I'm beginning at verse 34 and reading these words. Then the cloud covered the tent of meeting, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. And Moses was not able to enter the tent of meeting because the cloud had settled on it. And the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. This is good. This is a good thing. Throughout all their journeys, whenever the cloud was taken up from over the tabernacle, the sons of Israel would set out. But if the cloud was not taken up, then they did not set out until the day when it was taken up. For throughout all their journeys, the cloud of the Lord was on the tabernacle day by day, and there was fire in it by night and in the sight of all the house of Israel. You talk about God showing up. You talk about God filling the house. They could not enter. The presence of God was so strong, they couldn't probably even stand. I picture in my mind, they went face forward. They were broken in their spirits. But something was happening on the inside of them. That no man and no thing on this earth could do but God. And this is exactly what we need today in us. You and I have become the tabernacle. You and I carry the presence of God. (laughs) And because you have the presence of God in you, you will have wisdom beyond, beyond even your years. God can give wisdom to young people, unbelievable wisdom. And they can speak it and live it out and declare it. I I am pumped today. You know why I'm pumped? It happened to me this morning. Some of the glory came down. I haven't felt that for some time. But something began to churn. And there's no place but the presence of God. There's no place I'd rather be we sing about that. And when the presence of God shows up, in moments, things can change. Attitudes, brokenness can be removed. Healings can take place. In a moment, in a moment, in a moment. And we need God to fix our hearts. So often it's not the physical things that are occurring. It is not the flesh and blood that we're wrestling against. We know that. Spirit the powers of darkness. We are wrestling against not a man or a woman or a thing. It is a spirit of the enemy, or the spirit of the Antichrist, or the powers of the demonic. And thus, we need the whole armor. Amen? Thus, we need to be filled, so filled, that the enemy says, I can't do anything with that. I can't, I can't stand it. They run. The enemy runs. High tails. Get him out of the computer. Get him out of your house. Get him out of your mindset. Put to flight the enemy. This is the, the message here. Is basically, I was going to say, where God guides, he provides. Now, that's a nice flowery statement. Where God guides, he provides. Well, this is, what are, we, what are we looking for? What is it that we really need? God. Period. Start with that. Period. I just need you, God. Now we need food to eat. We need clothes. We need shelter. Yes, God knows that absolutely. What he's saying to us. You need me first. Start with the foundation. 
The building cannot stand unless it has a foundation. Will not get very far. You can throw walls up, a roof, and look all fancy. But the house built on sand, right? What happens? The winds, the rains, the floods, the storms of life will erode and eat away, and that house will not stand. Communities will fail. Entire nations will be just swept away without God. I'm pumped this morning because I believe that God wants to fill you and I with a fresh revelation of who He is. There is fresh oil. There is fresh wind. There is fire on the altar in the tabernacle. There need to be fire in our heart. As Paul said to Timothy, stir up the gift. of God. That's our part. Stir up the gift. Well, how do you do that? Get yourself in a position where you are focusing on God. Get yourself in a position. The tabernacle was just material. Just boards, linen, whatever. A place where God would come. Where's your place? It's somewhere, right in here. That's your place. You can be driving down the road and you can have communion with God. You can be in the shower and you can be praising God. You can do, do it. Some, how do you do it? How, I bet that some of you do that. Come on. We're, we're, what, what are we supposed to do? Seek him. Now here's the deal. Number one, when his glory filled the tabernacle, they, Moses wasn't able to enter. Why couldn't he enter? Because God was in the house. God's presence was so thick, so heavy. And see, when God's presence moves in your heart, in your, in your soul, in your being, everything just kind of, okay. I'm, I just need to be still. I need to, I just need to stop worrying and stop fighting in my own strength. I need to be in the spirit. Too often we get in the flesh. Right? Too often I think in the flesh. Oh, what if this happens? Oh, oh, it's going to cost us so much money. Oh, on it goes. The enemy, what does he do? He wants to plant seeds of doubt in your heart, and he wants to plant the spirit of fear. But guess what the Bible says? You know what the Bible says. God has not given you a spirit of fear. God has given you boldness. God has given you something that is supernatural beyond yourself and it's His Spirit that builds the house. But you have to be willing to allow Him. If I'm going to keep my flesh in control, I'm going to need a spirit. Come on. Galatians. The flesh sets its desire against the spirit, spirit against the flesh. What's, what, are we, what are we talking about here? The spirit against the spirit. That's the flesh sets a desire against the things of God. The spirit against the flesh. Well, these they are in opposite. They're just like night and day. And so, that we may not do the things that we, boy, if I really, well, you know, if I really, well, if I ever see, you know, if I get my hand. That's the flesh, Right? Oh, my goodness. It, it, it gets a hold of us. And we, we, if we haven't learned by now to know ourselves enough that we don't want to go there. We don't want to give in to the flesh, but it's so hard. Therefore, I need to spend time in the house, in the presence. The presence of God helps us Overcome stuff. 
that the flesh would love. Amen? Oh, my flesh would love to just... Ooh, ooh, you know? Feels good for a while. And the Spirit of God says, Marilla, come on here. Gary, um, we need to work on something. Conviction? Condemnation? No. Conviction. Lord, I, I, I blew it. I'm sorry. Okay, I, I know you blew it. Now that the fact you admitted you blew it, now we're getting somewhere. We're on the right path. When you admit that you blew it, then, you, then you're getting to the place of where humility, pride is starting to come down. We start to look to God again. And he loves us when we... He still loves us. He doesn't stop. Forty years they wander because of disobedience, but God is seeing now the next generation. This ordeal went on for 40 years. The tabernacle being carried, the, all the stuff, the priests doing its things that they were called to do, and God would settle on them with a cloud. And when God moved, they moved. How many like that? Lord, what am I supposed to do today? What is your will? Seek me. Oftentimes, God does not tell us what to do. He tells us how to be first. Attitude, character, motives. Young men, read the book of Proverbs. A young lady. And middle-aged and on and on. But Proverbs was especially written for young men. Wisdom. How to avoid fleshly things, keeping pure, getting to a place for what is God's will for my life. Proverbs 16. Memorize it. The plans of a man, what? Belong to him. Proverbs 16, verses 1 through 3. The plans of the heart belong to him. What? In other words, oh, God lets me have free will to choose. Yeah. You have freedom to dream and to use your gifts. Who do you think God, who do you, why do you have the dreams you have? Because God's wired you. God's gifted you. God's put it in your heart. Now listen. Keep up here. Okay. All the ways of a man are clean in his own sight. Well, I'm pretty good. Yeah, I'm doing good stuff. I'm working hard. Um, I'm a good person. Uh, I don't want to hurt anybody. You know, I don't. Want, I want to be honest. There's, there's this, there's this. Mm, if I could just get this much money, mm, 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 I just would love, you know, oh, I could do so much. It's okay. God's care, he says, be careful with money. Don't let money become your God. Don't let stuff, don't let new things, don't let, it all wears out. <laughs> it all Gonna burn someday. I'm not here to tell you that you know it's gloom and doom day, but it, 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 think about it. Rust, oh, rust. My new truck, oh, rust. And the first time it rusts, and the first scratch you get on it, it just really you know, a few years from now. Don't follow my example. My rust buckets. Minnesota, it's gonna happen. Rust, corruption. 
But the plans, God gives you something good and, and all of a sudden it starts to decay and erode. And I'll tell you one thing that doesn't erode. It's heaven. And it's the Spirit of God that's eternal. And it's the fruits of the Spirit that you can't pay for monetarily. You cannot buy God. You surrender. You seek. You hunger. You ask for Him to be revealed. And the plans, are you're laying them out before the Lord. Now God is weighing your motor. He sees your heart. He knows what you want, but He's looking at your heart. Now He says, commit your ways to the Lord. Commit. Oh, what, is he, what does that mean? Well, let's, let's say it this way. I will give you, Lord, I, I'm going to, you know, I'd like to have this, but, you know, this... I want to be pure in my motives. I, I, want to, I want to be able to give more to other people that are in need. And commit your words to the Lord. Oh, in other words, whatever I do with my hand, I'm not just serving my boss or a mankind, I'm serving you. Oh, oh whatever it takes, oh, whatever mom or dad asked me to do, I'm a young person at home and I don't whine, I don't, Come on, moms and dads. Hear it up. Your children need God. And they need to see God in us. Our children need to see an example of what it means to be a man of God, a woman of God. Our children will only know as much as if they've seen. And God is doing some good things in our youth. God is raising up generation, a generation that going to take this gospel to the ends of the world. It could be that there are some men and young people in this room today that they're going to be called by God to proclaim the things of God in the places where God is leading them. And there are going to be others that are going to join in their faith because you see how God is involved in our family and his heartbeat is for the family, for people. What is it that God wants in heaven? What is it that God wants? He wants people. He wants every person to have a chance to know him. And so, I've told this story back a few times. Working on a job, and there's this plumber. He's just shoving this line underneath the footing. On a, he's working away, and it's taking time. It's just effort, and there's struggle. And I'm noticing... No bad words coming out of this guy. He's doing good, man. How did he, you know, it's just, I said, how did, how did you, you, you did good. I said, how? well, he goes, Psalms 90, verse 17. He quotes it just like this. I'll quote it for you. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and do confirm for us the work of our hands. Yes, confirm the work of our hands. Hey, is God interested in your workplace? Yes. Is God interested in what you're doing with your hands? Yes. It goes past your hands to your heart. Because your heart is the most important place. The tabernacle. It's where God wants to be seated. It's where God wants to show up. It's where God wants to deal with the, the stuff that ought not to be in our hearts. It's where God begins to cleanse, and we get to the fire of God. Beyond that altar was a fire, and the priest laid the sacrifice representing the, the brokenness and the sacrifice which made us acceptable. We have Jesus who went to the cross. No longer do we have to offer the animals because Jesus has done it once for all. Hallelujah. We don't have to work up some kind of a sweat to get the attention of God. He's there already. We just have to begin to declare the things of God, that they are already. Begin to speak out the word of God out loud in your private place. Declare him, Lord. Lord, help me to have a heart after you. Lord, bless the work of our hands. Give us wisdom. I, mean, I think about Nehemiah when he was called to rebuild the walls in Jerusalem, his home city. Everybody would say, well, you think, what are you doing? Well, even if a fox would jump on that 
wall. It'll... <laughs> Isn't that the enemy? The enemy wants to squelch your dream. He wants to pour water on the fire. He wants to muddle with your thinking. But I'm here to say today that God has a bigger, he is bigger than the enemy, and he will put the enemy to flight. In the name of Jesus, you can pray this prayer. In the name of Jesus, I walk not in my flesh. I pray that Holy Spirit will fill me every day. I pray the Holy Spirit will put on the armor every day. I will not enter, I should not enter into a day without praying something like this. Lord, this is a new day. Help me to have your protection. Help me to have your mindset. Every day is a new day. Every day is an opportunity. And so if, if I try to go to uh, do things in my own strength, only looking to my own abilities, what will happen, it will, I will face eventually burnout frustration, and overwhelmness, and defeat, and I will cave under pressure. Well, God says, when I move, you move. He said, when I set out, you... Well, God's never in a hurry like we are. So what do I do while I'm waiting? A pastor friend told me we were building the building, we were going up. Things were happening, the walls were going up, the roof was happening. And for some reason, it snowed. The shingles weren't completed. Oh, me, my, started to worry. What did the Lord do? He said, well, he, we couldn't do but nothing. But just, there's no use, just wait. Guess what? Just after deer season, it warmed up. Right out here, the snow melted. And guess who went on the roof? Myself, my son Cody, and Horton. Horton finished. We finished it. And then it was just like, good enough. We're done. Take a rest. Take the winter off. The building can sit. Wait. And when the spring came, it was time. God sent electricians, and the building continued. God has his timing in everything, every season of your life, in every situation of your life. God always has his timing. And that's where we get, oh, 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 this is going to be done. And I'm there. We got to get this done now. Hurry up and wait. We say this thing. Get, you know, patient is not, give me patience, Lord. But I don't, I don't want to pray for patience because, oh boy, he'll put me to the mill. Right? 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 When God moves, it's so easy. It falls together. It worked out better than you thought when God moves. And so we need a move of God. You know, and you and I. We need the fear of God to move in our heart every day. Waiting is hard, but it is often necessary. One of my pastor friends, friends, pastor friends said this, those are divine delays. Oh, sounds really good. Divine delays. Yeah. The old Norwegian in me has to be crucified. Work harder. Right? We heard it last Sunday. Work smarter, not harder. Right? Our friend. What's her name? Julie preached about abiding in the vine. And we can get a whole lot further with the Spirit of God. We can get 10 feet if we're lucky. I remember that, Gary, when we had to plow and the rip broke the ground? And, and, and we got all these guys on a rope. We had this old patch and hand plow. And, yeah, and we, had, we had 15 guys or more. No way. And so some, uh, my young man was helping me. Come, we had this all planned. Comes out of the side there with a bobcat. No problem. That represented God. 
right? We can only do that, but God can break through the enemy's walls. God can break down walls that are thick like Jericho. God can break through the hardest of hardest of hearts because he's he's in the business of pruning, of calling us to a better way to live by his spirit. His intention, his heart, is to drive out the enemies, these people, So a miracle after miracle after miracle. Yet they still struggled to continue to believe and to continue to keep on. When they finally get to the promised land and they send out ten guys to go look and spy out to see what's going on, what's the fruit like, eight of them come back and go, oh! We can't. We, oh, dude, we're just like grasshoppers. You, you got to be kidding me. What was happening there? They were in the flesh. They were measuring themselves against the enemy. They were in the flesh. But with this Joshua and Caleb stayed true to God, we can do it. We can take it. Because the Spirit of God is in their heart. When the Spirit of God gets in your heart, things change. Things have to be, things are going to happen. The Red Sea opens. How many need a breakthrough this year? How many need a breakthrough? Breakthrough in some way. In a family member, yes. In a, in a situation, maybe you have a friend that is just in this addiction, bound. We need to break, pray the breakthrough. Pray over our young people that are facing a world of the enemy that just ooh, has so many things. He's, Electronically, devices, so many things that were accessible that were not accessible so many years ago. It was so easy to get hooked on things that we shouldn't get hooked on. I'm talking about things that we shouldn't look at, things that can mess us up. Friends, we need God. We need to return. We need a, we need a sweeping. I tell you what. When the presence of God hits us, when it hits you, you want to keep there. You want to stay there. You want to go back again and again. You just keep wanting more. Lord, I want you more. You can never get enough of God because he begins to bring you from one level to the next level to the next level to the next level, and it keeps on going. When he, he says, I will provide for you, he means he will provide his presence. He will provide his hand that is able to do exceeding abundantly above and beyond all that we ask or think. We often heard this in Bible school, when God guides, he provides. You know, really, if God puts a call in your life to go somewhere and you don't have the money, all you can do is reach out to people, the people of God and pray and the money comes in, comes in. We believe it's God's will. But sometimes there's a testing. We need miracles. I have one little story I was going to share, but how much time is it? I lost a little key this week. I don't know. It was in the, I was in the woods working. You never get to thinking at night. You, you put, uh, I put this key in my pocket, I thought, and it went down the bibs and fell out. That's what happened. I'm not sure. I, I wake up early in the morning. <sighs> I don't, I don't think I left it in the ignition. I'm thinking, I don't think so. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? No, I just said, I'm going to pray. Okay, God. Learn the snow. Backtrack. Lord, I need a miracle. That's what I prayed. Lord, I need a miracle. This would be a miracle. Looking for a little key in a snow. Well, the miracle was this. This is kind of common. He didn't, I haven't found the key yet, that key. 
But I, pray, I, I dialed my brother Omar. He never answers his phone. But he called me back. That was a miracle. Then I said, Omar, what are you doing today? Um, well, I'm going to give blood at 1 o'clock. Whoa, I was thinking maybe coming up, seeing where you're at. Yeah, yeah, I'm going, yeah, yeah. Well, could you do something for me? Would you stop by at the implement and, you know, John Deere, get a key? Oh, what? A key? I lost the key. Oh, okay, yeah, I can do this. So he gets the key to me. Saved my day. Saved my day. I don't know, does God care about the little key? Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. We can't think God is too big to answer our little problems. That's the greatness of our God. So let's stop worrying about the king. Let's just, let's just take a moment to praise him. Let's just invite him into our hearts afresh. This year is a new beginning. Lead us something on your hands.